Hi, Dan here with Sky Pilot Faith Quest podcasts and videos. Be sure to click the subscribe button below. It doesn't obligate you to anything. It just says that you are interested in knowing about new videos whenever you open YouTube. Welcome to the fourth in this year's new Lenten video series. Each of these videos is based on the readings, the stories, the traditions associated with a particular day in Lent, and this one is based on what happened on the day we call Monday Thursday, which is the day before Jesus was crucified. And this year, 2021, it happens on April 1st. Our question for today is, what is so radical about Monday Thursday? So let's get to it. Welcome to the Sky Pilot Podcast that explores questions of faith, spirituality, and religion. I'm Dan Matthews, and I don't have all the answers, but I do enjoy the questions. Welcome to the podcast where every question is an invitation into a spiritual quest, and you're invited along for the journey. Sarah and I, before the unpleasantness of our current viral times, enjoyed going to hear live music. When I was still in seminary, we went to a little place in Alexandria to hear music. We went one time to hear Jerry Jeff Walker, and that was back in the days when smoking in public areas was still allowed. So there were two things we remember about that experience. First, it was a great show, and second, we had to take all of our clothes and put them outside, and then we had to shower immediately after getting home. In Atlanta, we've been to listen to famous songwriters, bluegrass musicians, Oh, a highlight of our bluegrass music was we got to hear Ralph Stanley on what turned out to be, I think, was his final tour. We've gone and listened to jazz music and several friends in small venues around town. One of our very favorite places was back when we lived in Kingsport, Tennessee. It was in the next town over, Johnson City, Tennessee, and it's called Down Home. We heard a couple of groups and artists perform there, and we went a couple of times to hear one particular guy, a solo artist named Mike Cross. He's an amazingly talented musician, and we had such a good time listening to him that we bought, as you do, several of his CDs back when buying CDs to listen to music was a thing. He plays guitar and fiddle and writes most of his own songs, and he's well known for using humor in his music. Probably his most famous song is The Scotsman, but he has one song that I listened to on his CD several times that's always struck me as strange. It's about a man who lives in unusually wild lifestyle. His family and his friends always ask him, why do you live that way? Why do you live the way you do? His answer is always in the form of a question, and here it is. If you knew you were going to die, wouldn't you do as you please today? Every time he asks the question in the context of the song, it makes me pause to think. And I always answer, no. No, I, I wouldn't. If I knew I was going to die, it would not cause me to go on some sort of wild rampage. I believe it would cause me to look at my life and what it's meant. What have I achieved? Maybe more importantly, how have I related to those I love and I truly care about? If you knew that you were going to die tomorrow, how would it change today? Would you have a sudden and very short-lived midlife crisis, or would, it, or would it touch you at a deeper level? And that question leads us into the scripture passage for Maundy Thursday. This is from the Gospel of John the 13th chapter. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it in the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table, took off his outer robe, and tied a towel around himself. 
Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know now what I am doing, but later you will understand. Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is entirely clean, and you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him, and for this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example, that you also should do as I have done. Very truly, I tell you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me. And as I said to the Jews, as so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. For Jesus and the disciples, it's Thursday night. Just four days ago, he made his triumphal entry into Jerusalem. But Jesus knows that tomorrow he will be dead. It's probably a special night for the disciples. Jesus has called them together, and they're having a special meal together. There are no other people present. Certainly, that was a rare occasion for them when they got Jesus all to themselves. They sat around tables, no doubt, aware of the specialness of this moment, yet they had no realization of the true specialness of the moment. You see, Jesus had them all together for a reason. Jesus looked into their eyes, and he probably saw little awareness. They were still so caught up in the excitement and the momentum of Palm Sunday. Little did they know that the momentum of his triumphant entry into the city was, well, dead. And he would be dead as well by this time tomorrow. This was it, their last time together as a community. This was their last supper. They ate, they drank, they talked. They still had almost no understanding. So many words, so much teaching, and they still understood so little. The time for talking was over. No words, absolutely none, were going to make a difference to them. It was time to do something. Something so startling that they would never forget. Jesus rose quietly from the table, and the disciples watched with curiosity from their conversations. Then he took off his robes, and the room began to fall silent. He took a towel and filled a basin with water. Now, despite how it is represented by da Vinci in his painting of the Last Supper, at the time of Jesus, they did not sit upright at the table the way we do. 
They tended to eat in a semi-reclined position with one arm on the table and their legs and feet stretched out behind them, pointing away from the table. This makes what Jesus is about to do much easier as so he had easy access to their feet. I can't even imagine the shock felt by the first disciple as Jesus knelt down and began to wash that disciple's feet. Finally, as he made his way around the table, he came to Simon Peter, and Peter said, No, Lord, you will never wash my feet. Peter is the impetuous one. He often goes by his gut, which means he has a tendency to be 100% right or 100% wrong. This occasion was unique because even though Jesus corrects Peter, he is absolutely 100%, without a doubt, correct in his response. He was saying, Lord, I am not worthy to have you, the Messiah, the chosen one, wash my feet. And he wasn't. Yet Jesus was teaching them something new. If the Lord God Almighty can humble himself by being born as a human, and if in Jesus' humility he's even willing to wash the feet of his followers, then everything they probably have believed about God is wrong. If you had, at the time of Jesus, a hundred servants, the lowest of all one hundred would be given the job of washing the feet of guests who visited your home. Just from a practical standpoint, the roads were dirty and there were no such thing as shoes or boots. At best, you might have a pair of sandals. And washing feet was not a humbling job. It was a humiliating job. And Jesus chose to do it not for people of importance, but for his own followers because they needed to learn something important. Being a Christian is not about leadership. It's about service. It's about proclaiming God incarnate, who we know as the risen Lord, and it's about serving all people, everyone we come in contact with in the name of Jesus Christ. Jesus had one last shot at the disciples on this last night, and he made his most important point. Being a Christian is not about doing acts of service. Doing acts of service just means coming down from your house on the hill to do charitable things for the people in the valley. Jesus wants more than that. He wants us to be servants. It is more than what we do. It's who we are called to be. The word Maundy from Monday Thursday comes from the word mandate. And this day, on Monday Thursday, Jesus gives all followers a new mandate. Jesus said, serve. Serve the lowest of the low. Serve the poorest of the poor. Serve them in ways that are like the way I serve you now. He said that to them at the Last Supper, and the message still stands for us today. Jesus said, be like this. Do this. Be a servant, and there will be no doubt that you are truly people following God's path for your lives. Amen. Thanks for joining me today for this video. If you found this to be meaningful or helpful, please click on the like and subscribe buttons. Also, if you don't already, be sure to join me for my podcasts under the same name, Sky Pilot Faith Quest. You can find them wherever you listen to podcasts. And on your spiritual journey, may you ask questions, seek answers, and boldly go wherever the quest takes you. Thank you.